All right, you know what it is. This one is going to be about how I maintained over the 26 years serving life with no parole plus 20 years filing over 100 appeals all getting denied, you know? But before I do that, let me say this special announcement, man. All right. Here we go. Special announcement, man. This is what my cash app look like. It must have that green checkered box to the right of my name. No picture of me. None of that. This is exactly what my cash app look like. Once you put in unique, make a haul, and you get ready to send it. It must have that green checkered box. Let's get this thing going. Alright. Alright. Let's go. Let's go. Now, Unique Make Audio, man, I'm going to tell you about how I maintain. When I stood in front of the judge and he gave me life plus 20 years, and he said life with no parole, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So once he said that, you know, and then he even had the nerve to add in, you know, until death, <laughs> you know? And I'm standing there and I'm looking at him and I'm saying, man, you might be wearing a black robe, but only person could judge me is God, you know? And it threw him for a loop because then the prosecutor, you know, he chimed in and, you know, the judge said, I want to hear from the defendant, you know? So he asked me if I had anything I wanted to say. I told him, send me someplace where I could further my education, you know? So when I go home, I'll be a better productive citizen. And the prosecutor jumped in again and said, oh, see, that's what I'm talking about, Judge. He's in denial. He thinks he's going to go home one day. He don't understand that life is until death. And even if you give him less time today, Judge, you know, in 30 years, he'll find something else illegal to do. And, you know, it's just in his nature. He's crammed a lifetime of crime into 29 years and da da da, da you know. And it's all this crap that I'm listening to, <laughs> you know. And after he said that, the judge said, my hands are tied. There's nothing I could do. You know, I would like to help you, but I can't. Only way to help you is if you help yourself and tell the prosecutor, the government, who and where you was getting your drugs from. Then it's up to him what he brings back to me. You know, so I said, you know, Your Honor, you know, I said what my statement is, and that's my statement. I want to go someplace closer to home to further my education. You know what I mean? In case I go home one day, I'll better, be a better citizen. He said, you don't understand. You're never going home unless you work with this man standing over here at this other table. You know? And I said, well, you know, I can't do that. And that's when the judge said, you know, oh, you under the no snitching code. You know, that's what they called it back in my days. I said, nah, it ain't no no snitching code. It's, you know, being on unique time, being on man time. You know what I mean? Unique time. You know, meaning, you know, I got caught, so I'm not going to bring none of my comrades in, you know, to lessen my sentence and put them to go through what I'm getting ready to go through because of me slipping and getting caught. I got caught. My comrades didn't get caught. So never could I tell on my comrades. That's like, you know, they got them comedians be saying that joke, two dudes go and rob a house and the police come, you know. And one dude get caught and he said, come on, Johnny, come on out. They caught us. <laughs> you know what I mean? They caught us. Come on out. You know, now they ain't caught us. They caught you. You know what I mean? Just like they caught me. You know, so I couldn't say, okay, let me turn on Johnny over here. You know, we don't do that. You know, because we stand on principles. When you enter into the criminal world and you do something with somebody, it's like, uh, you know, back in the day, they also had something that they used to do called, you know, the old, my old heads know what I'm talking about, called blood brothers. You know, where you take a pin and you prick your finger and you put your blood and, your, you know, your comrade's blood from your thumb together. You know what I mean? And, you know, that's how you become blood brothers. That means that you don't tell on your brother, you know, whether he's living or dead, you know, under no circumstance. That's why when the prosecutor came to me and asked me to tell on my brother, I was like, I can't do it. Never could I do that, you know? They thought I was crazy. No, I wasn't crazy. I was on unique time. A.K.A. man time. Let's get that straight. 
You know what I mean? I, I, I couldn't do that. You know, I wouldn't be able to sleep with myself. But anyway, so once they sentenced me and I went back to the joint, everybody was real quiet when I came in because, you know, the police done told them, you know, oh, he just got life. So, you know, be careful. Watch him. You're not high me. He might act. Everybody take it different. And they told him all that old crap. So I go in the unit and, you know, I go in my cell, put my stuff down. I go on the phone and I call home and, you know, I, I, I talk to, you know, my woman and her children and, you know, I let them both know that, yo, you know, I got caught. You know what I mean? I, I, I rolled a dice and I lost, you know, but it ain't over yet. I'm still going to be fighting. You know what I mean? Even though, you know, they gave me life with no parole, at least I'm alive and you can still come see me. You can bring the kids to see me and I can still be in the kid's life. It's better than being six foot under, you know? So that's where we was at. Then, you know, that was September 15th. Then fast forward to October 1st, you know. Now, October 1st, the uh, some marshals pulled me down. It wasn't even a prosecutor. Some lame marshals pulled me down. And uh, they had me handcuffed with a little black box. I'm going to tell you what that is later. And shackled to the table. And had my feet that were shackled, shackled to the floor. You know, a little uh, metal, metal, metal U-shaped joint in the floor. And they put the chain through it and, you know, locked me into the floor, I guess, so I couldn't jump up and jump on them. So when they come in and they take a bunch of big 8 by 10 pictures of my brother and they lay it out on the table. Uh, he got his brains all splattered out, you know what I mean? And they're telling me that the fox hunt is over. <laughs> I just looked at him and laughed, man, you know what I mean? I said, all right, well, he ain't got to do time in your stinking jail. They said, yeah, but you will, you will rot in our jail. I said, nah, never will I do that because I got God on my side. Now take me back up to my cage, you know? And like I said before, that was the longest walk I ever had to take, man, you know, to hold my composure after hearing and seeing that my brother got two bullets to the head. It was hard, extremely hard, man, you know? But I made it up there, and as soon as I made it up there, I got in the cell. And I just collapsed on the bed, you know, and I just started crying and shit. And, you know, dude came in there that didn't know my name, uh, my government name or my street name. I was going by the name Black. That's the name we use. Big shout out to Booby Black. You know, Booby used that name Black when he go down there too because we dark. Yeah. So I just said I was Black. When, when he came in there, I guess uh, my baby mother know his baby mother told his baby mother that I was going to get sentenced today, da, da, da. So he put two and two together. He figured out that it was me. So he come in the cell, you know, and he sit down next to me. He said, man, you unique. You know what I mean? And I'm sitting there and I'm crying like a baby. And this man seen me cry. First thing on my mind is to take his eyes out because I don't never want a man to be able to say he seen me crying, you know? But that was the first thing that came to my mind. I, you know, I'm, I'm just keeping it real, homie. You know what I mean? And, you know, because, you know, I was taught that, you know, men cry in the dark, you know. And if somebody see you crying, it's the same thing like in prison, how we got a code. If you see a man's genitals, you got to stab him. You know what I mean? Meaning if a man, you know, masturbate to a female or coming out the shower, got his joint hanging out in front of you, you know, you got to stab him. You know what I mean? But, you know, that's where I was at, man. You know, that's where I was at. And, you know, I'm taking a ride down that lane, so that's why I'm a little... You know, which y'all might think is emotional right now, but I just call it serious because it's serious conversation. So, you know, dude sat next to me, said, I know who you are, that, that, that. So after we talked, you know what I mean? He said, man, it's going to be all right. And, you know, he gave me the old pep talk. And, you know, I already had my mind made up that, you know what I mean? It is what it is, you know what I mean? That's just a casualty of war. That's my brother. I love him to death, but it's a part of the game. Just like me getting life plus 20 with no chance of parole was a part of the game. All this is a part of the game. That's why I tell the youth, don't get involved. It, it ain't worth it, man. If you're going to play a game, you must play by the rules. If you don't play by the rules, then you're a sucker and you get thrown out the game. You understand? And, you know, back in my days, throwing out the game was two to the head for telling. You know, nowadays there's no consequences, so everybody telling. I tell nobody to get nobody two to the head, but I'm just keeping it 100 just like when I do that King Vaughn and FBG duck joint, I'm going to keep it 100, man. Y'all better tune in for that because I don't know if y'all ready for that. I know the comments going to blow up crazy because I'm just going to get it real, man. You know, like I said, no way in hell should they have labeled that young man King Vaughn as serial killer. You know, compare him to Death Redonna. I feel disrespected, you know what I mean, as a man under the oath. I feel real disrespected that they disrespected that young man like that. And, you know, I give us... Uh, 
I give this man, uh, you know, I say his man because they grew up before they branched off and, you know, became teenagers and picked up the pistol. I give this man FBG Duck, you know, the utmost respect as well, you know what I mean? Because he looked out for his crew. He did everything he had to do. He put the weight of the, you know, on the hood on his shoulders the same as I did. So I know how he felt, you know. And, you know, I used to slide on niggas too, you know what I mean, when I was into my stick-up thing. So I know what that was like. So I'm going to break both of them down so y'all understand what this thing really about. But, you know, let, let me ride, man. <clears throat> let me ride. Let me ride. Let me ride. Let me ride back over. You know, like I said, I'm in a serious mood. Let me ride back over to, you know, we back in the county jail. Do find out who I am. My brother just got killed. They showed me pictures. Brains blowing out. We sitting there. And he talking. And I get on the phone. I'm talking to my girl. And I tell her straight up. I said, yo, they killed my brother. You know? And... She just got real silent because she didn't know what to say. So I just told her, yo, don't say nothing. You know what I mean? Just sit there. And we sat on the phone for about 30 minutes with nobody saying nothing. I just wanted to know that she was there for me. I didn't need her to say, you know, um, my condolences. I didn't need nothing. I just needed her to just listen. You know, sometimes, you know, when you're on the street and you get around people, you just want people to just listen to you. You know what I mean? Because you know, you know, I know, you know, that. I got my direction I'm going in. And this is what y'all have to understand. When you dealing with somebody and you know they're a natural leader, no matter who it is, because there's a whole bunch of natural leaders, you know, you have to know when to just sh shut the F up. You know what I mean? And just listen. You know, if I say, go cop the merch, man. Shut the F up. It falls for everything, you know? Fifth Amendment, when you get picked up and the police pick you up, shut the F up. Don't go in there and tell on your comrade. <laughs> you know what I mean? When, you know, when, when, when the person you look up to is speaking or even don't look up to is speaking. Sometimes when certain people are speaking, you have to know when to speak and when not to speak. You know, you don't just talk to talk. Every time they say something, you don't say something. Because when you do that, then it's a miscommunication. That means you're not listening to him and he's not listening to you. And you're both just talking to talks. So you're both just wasting time and wasting air, wasting time, wasting energy. You know what I mean? You only get 24 hours in a day, so in my world, you don't get, you know what I mean, to use that whole 24, because by the time you get some rest for three hours, four hours, you know what I mean? You got 20 hours in a day. You know, you can't accomplish everything, but now when the when, when the leader is focused on something, and you're, you know you following him, that don't mean every time he say something, you got to try and explain and show that you know what he's talking about. Just fall back, sit back, and just you know, just shut up. <laughs> you know what I mean? No disrespect, but just give me two one hundred. Just shut up. You know, and that's what a lot of us men do. A lot of us men don't know when to just shut up. A female start talking, and she telling you how her day was, or what happened with her girlfriend, or what happened with her mother. And we as men, we trying to fix it. So we saying, yeah, well maybe you should. You know what I mean? She's like, nah, but you know what I mean? And we're like, well, how about you? Yeah, you know I'm saying, nah. You know, she don't want you to say nothing, my brother. She just want to vent. And women is like that more, you know what I mean? But men, you know, we think introvert and we think what we think in within when women say it without. But just like you don't want to be bothered when you're trying to figure something out in your head, she don't want to be bothered when, you know, she's, you know, expressing herself vocally. Well, you know the word that I'm using, man. Like I said, I'm in a serious mode, so it ain't on right there right now. But, you know, that's where that's at, man. So, you know, a dude found out, but when they sent me to Lewisburg, I didn't know what to expect, you know what I mean? About two, three weeks later, the bus came, and, you know what I mean? Matter of fact, a, a car came and picked me up, you know what I mean? Um, they put me in a van by myself, you know, then they had two of my New York homies, uh, Slug and D, Duwap brother, you know, was in a police car following my um, van, and then there was another police car following that police car because, you know, they thought somebody was going to come try and break me out. So they had me in a van by myself, handcuffed and shackled, and had the homies follow me in the car they was in. Just so you know, like I said, I even called names, verify what I'm saying. They know, and I took mine like a gangster. You know, police were expecting me to be looking all scared, sitting in the van, man, I'm ready for whatever. First thing I'm going to do is get me a knife. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like when you come out of jail, like King Vaughn said, first thing he said he wanted was a gun. He ain't want no sex. He ain't want his mother. He ain't want nothing. He just wanted a gun. You know what I mean? Because when you're in the street, that's what it is. You know, the girl you're going to sex and your mother, they both understand 
that, you know, the gun come first, you know, when we choose that life, you know? So first thing I'm on it was a knife when I get there. So that's all I'm thinking is I hope I find somebody there that could get me a knife ASAP. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what was on my mind. But, you know, luckily when I get there, you know, Lewisburg, first they put me in a hole with a big dude, you know, out of uh, Florida. I think it was from Miami, you know, um, or Fort Lauderdale, maybe Miami. He was from Miami. But they called him Big Duke. Big shout out to Big Duke. Y'all from Miami, you know, tell Big Duke get at me. His leg from his knee down on one of his legs, maybe his right leg is, you know, tore up. Maybe he got shot with a shotgun or something, you know what I mean? Because, you know, just typical war wounds. But it's, you know, that was a distinctive mark on him. But they put me in the cell with this dude, and he was already on the compound. So I had to go there before I go in front of the table to go see all the you, you, you know, the plantation owners for them to look at my file and my criminal history and my mental history and my family history and all the history and history and history to see if they wanted to, you know, take me on their plantation because every plantation is different. Some is less aggressive than others. You know what I mean? So they look at your file and, you know, they try and put you where, you know, if you're aggressive, they put you with aggressive dudes. They put you... You know, if you ain't got a big criminal history, no violence, no whatever, they, you know, put you in, you know, place with other people that was like that, you know. But now, they put me in there, and I'm over there with, you know, my man Big C, you know, from uh, Supreme Team, you know, my man Camacho, Rayfo Edmonds was there, Lil Nut was there, you know what I mean? It was all men there. Big KK was there from the Wild Cowboys that used to throw niggas in the trunk, yeah, you know what I mean? He probably had his eyes on me, too. But we in Lewisburg now, so, you know, we laugh about a lot of things. But he never admitted he had his eyes on me. But I know he did because he was getting money. They had their eyes on you, man. But, you know, I'm always ready. And that's why, like I said, I'm going to bring it back to King Vaughn. That's why I like King Vaughn because, you know, when you got an issue, you got to bring it to the person. You don't wait for them to bring it to you. So, you know, when the Wild Cowboys was there, they knew right off the rip that, you know, I'm going to bust my joint real quick, you know, so... You know, any, any misunderstanding, misstep, miscommunication, you better believe my gun is going to be doing the talking for me. I ain't going to be doing a whole lot of talking. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, that's what I mean by I compare that to the young man. I'm looking forward to doing the, you know, the breakdown on, uh, you know, King Vaughn, you know. And, uh, you know, big rest in peace to him and FBG Duck, man. Good young soldiers, man. I respect them, man. I respect them, man. I've been watching the videos on them. I respect these young men, man. You know, let's get it right. At my age, I don't agree with what they did, you know, but, you know, I respect them because, you know, for what they entered into, that's what it called for, you know, and they handled it as men, you know. Y'all don't understand that, you know what I mean? Like I said, suckers and trolls go somewhere else, man. You know, it's man time right now, you know, unique time. I'm just talking right now, just venting. Let you know where I'm at. But, you know, they put me in there because, you know, this is where you wind up, man. Either in a graveyard or in one of these penitentiaries dealing with what I'm telling you. So they put me in a cage with Big Duke. Me and Big Duke up in there. He telling me what it's like down there. Telling me I got homies out there, da 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 He don't really know their names because he's from Florida. He stayed in the Florida car with the Dirty South people and da 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 But, you know, I go down there to Quay. They see me. They, you know, interview me, do whatever. I'll save that for another video what happened there. But, you know, they decide to send me over there in our blocks. I go in our block. I run into Bounty, Youngie, you know, Prime from Brooklyn, Old Ball Majette. You know what I mean? We had got uh, Freddie Myers, you know, Stevie Monsanto. You know, it was all gangsters there. Big Tim Thomas. You know what I mean? It was all, you know, it was all gangsters there, man. You know, Big Shakur. You know, I mean, I could go on with names all day. Powerful. You know, like I said, you know, it was grateful. There was nut, you know. It was it, everybody was there, man. It, it it was crazy, but we up in the joint now, and you know I meet a couple of homies. So the first time I tell them I need a knife, <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> and they was like, Nah, here, and they handed me one right off the rip. That's why my man Jake got there. Big shout out to my man Jake. Give me give me a round of applause. Give me a round of applause. Give me a round of applause. My man Jake, you know my man Jake from a, like 132nd, you know. Uh, he down south somewhere, now I ain't gonna say where, but you know, I went to see him, he doing great, got his life together too. But my man Jake, the first time he got there, he was young, he was younger than me, so as soon as he got there, the first thing I did was, you know, I got him a, um, a, a big ass knife made out the, you know, the side of the bed. 
You know what I mean? Because that was one of the homies from Harlem. So, you know, I had to, you know, arm him real quick. So I came. I gave him this big-ass knife. And it's funny that when I went to go see him since I've been home, he was like, man, you know, I love you, man. And, you know, he gave me, a, you know, a couple of racks and, you know, was like, man, you know, I appreciate you giving me that joint when I first came in there because I didn't even know I needed it. You know what I mean? And, you know, I'm glad I had it when I had it. And thanks to you and I appreciate that, man. And, you know, but that's just how we do as men, you know. That's how we do as men. If I tell you youngins, don't get involved in this, man, because this thing is too real. You know, all this you get away with on YouTube and all that and get away with around dudes that want, don't want no drama around you and all that, talking about telling and all that. You even think telling in the prison you don't get a knife in you. You know what I mean? And you're going to have to show your paperwork, you know, showing that you did the YouTube way and, you know, you told and, you know, you got a 5K one and, you know, substantial assistance and all that. So... You know, to prevent that, you know, don't even get off the porch, man, because this life is for real, you know. But, you know, so once I got there, now I had to really think, like, where is my mind frame, man? How am I going to survive? I'm supposed to die in here. What do I do today? What's going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen the next day? What's going to happen in two weeks? What's going to happen in a month? What would I be doing in three years? Would my appeal be granted in two years, three years, five years? How long is it going to take for me to go home? Because we're all dependent on our appeal to come through and us to win. So these are all the crazy thoughts going through my mind. Where I had to sit down, man, and I tapped in to my grandfather, Augustus um, Garvey. And I remember he always told me, man, never let the people see you sweat. And remember, God is not going to give you nothing that you can't handle. Yes, he said that very words out my mouth that y'all just used on GP today just to use it. But, you know, I thought of him when I was there. And I just decided to fall back and just do it one day at a time, man. You know, and that was the best thing I ever did. I just worried about today, blocking in safe, you know. And then when I come out the door early in the morning... And, it, uh, you know, and I'm healthy and safe. I pray to get back in the cell again in the night where I'm healthy and safe. And I try to stay away from a lot of bullshit. So, you know, like my man Larry Moe from D.C. said, he said it best, man. He said, you need, you know, best way to describe you is use a gentleman. You know what I mean? <laughs> use a gentleman. But that's what it is. You know, me and I respect people, you know. But, you know, don't put me in a situation to have to see the animal because all I want you to see is the gentleman. You know what I mean? Like, I... I I blew up and, you know, my daughter and my child's mother at two different times. They seen me, you know, they, they seen the street side come out. And I felt bad because it's, that's a side that you don't want your loved ones to see. Because in our world and from our reputation, you know, they'll get scared and you don't want to scare them. You know what I mean? You don't want to have the people that you love scared of you. You know, so these are things that you have to deal with when you enter this world. You understand? Meaning, you know, let's go back to King Vaughn again. Like I said, I'm going to definitely do a whole joint on him. I'm going to go back to him. You know, there was a joint where a female, you know, said something to him in one of the comments or whatever. And, you know, she disagreed with him or whatever went down. And then he, she told him, you know, please don't kill me. <laughs> that man wasn't even thinking about killing this young lady. But she's thinking that, you know, being that he got all these alleged bodies that he might kill her for disagreeing with him. But these are the things. But that's a stranger saying that. Imagine when somebody close to you, somebody that you love that you'll never harm, you know, when they say, please don't hurt me. And that's the last thing on your mind is to hurt them. But when they do that, it makes you think and realize like, damn, I've been savage. When my loved ones is afraid of me. They tolerate me, but they're afraid of me. I've been through that stage in my life running the streets, man. And, you know, it ain't a good feeling. At the time, you don't give a crap. You know what I mean? That's how we is. It's giving to you 100 from a gangster's point of view. At the time, you don't give a crap, you know? So I'm over there in Lewisburg, man, and, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to maintain it. So I decided to do it one day at a time. I'm not going to rush nothing. I'm not going to speed nothing up. I'm, I'm just going to stay in my lane, you know what I mean? But I made sure I got my knife, you know what I mean? So if somebody came in my lane, you know, it was something else. Like, you know, I remember I had a situation with one of the homies. Um, I didn't even know the brother, you know what I mean? But the brother just didn't like me, you know. This is when I just got there. brother didn't like me because I was just, you know, too fly and everybody was following behind me. I still had an entourage and, 
you know, and he's sitting back and he wasn't really feeling it. So he must have told one of the homies, like, man, um, you know, I was getting weed or something. I was getting weed on the visit. So I was getting weed. So he told the homie, man, he got weed. He'll never give me no weed. I'm going to take that joint, you know. But my man, you know, he's so official and so gangster. You know what I mean? Even though, his, even though that's his homie from the street, you know what I mean? He was like, nah, if you're going to do something to him, you're going to do it head up. Because you my man and he my man. And he's like, yo, but we grew up together. He said, nah, but he my man. And you know what I mean? Yeah, he a man because you're looking out for. He said, nah, he a man because he a good man. And he on unique time, you know? So when he told him that, he I come walking out the building. And my man kept saying, you know, in Jamaica, you know, kept saying, see him that? See him that say something to him? No, tell him what y'all said. See him that? You know what I mean? Like, don't tell me all this about him. Just see him that? So my man tell him, putting him on the spot, saying, tell him what you said. You know, so I said, what's up? You know, so dude like, nah, nah, I ain't say nothing, nah, nah, nah. So now he wiggling out of it. So my man said, oh, so you ain't got nothing to say now. I said, all right. He said, well, don't say nothing to me about that no more when, you know, he ain't around. You know, being that you ain't going to tell him or you ain't going to do it. You know, because he was telling him that he should take this from me and take that from me. That's how dudes do when you get the pack. So I'm letting you youngest know when you go to jail, man. You get the pack, meaning you're getting drugs or you get money or you have access to money. That's the pack. So now you got people, you know, that don't have a dime, don't know where dime coming from. They just going to move on you. So on the strength of that, you know what I mean? You push back, you know, and you tell them straight up, you know, where we going? <laughs> you know, we going to fight over this or not? Because I'm ready to die for my pack. Uh, you going to die... You know, for trying to get my pack, if that's so, let's go. You know, and that's how it is, you know. But, you know, so Richard Pena from um, New Orleans, you know what I mean? Um, big shout out to Richard Pena, man. <laughs> big shout out to Richard Pena. Richard Pena sat there, man, and he gave me the best advice during my whole 26 years. You know, when I was in Lump Park with him, you know, Lump Park, California, 2001. This is eight years after I've been locked up. I got locked up in 93. This is 2001, you know. Richard Pena said, man, you need, you know, people like us, we got to file Chapter 11. <laughs> you know, I'm like, what you talking about? I didn't even know what Chapter 11 was. I'm going to give it 100. You know, I dealt with cash, man. Everything was in apartments and storage houses, you know, when it come to my cash. And that was my bank's. He said, nah, we got to file chapter 11. So I said, what you mean chapter 11? He said, nah, we just got to file that we broke because as long as, you know, dudes see that we got money, they, we're going to put ourselves in a situation to have to hurt one of these clowns thinking that it's easy to get from us, you know? And that's the best advice he gave me, and that's when I toned it down. Because before that, I was wearing, you know, tailor-made sweatsuits for my man Yousef. Big shout-out to Yousef from uh, Philadelphia. You know, from uh, Philly. You know, he used to make all the clothes for the gangsters on the compound. He made the bucket hats and everything. I got some pictures. I'm going to show you some pictures, man. I, you know, it's just I'm doing these videos myself, and I set up the Roco. Go to Roco.com, you know, and, you know, if you got Roco on your TV, pull up Unique Mecca Audio. Watch a couple of my videos, man. And I'm on Spotify, Unique Mecca Hall. Go download some joints, man. And make sure you hit the Cash App, man. The Cash App is working. This is what it looked like. So you understand, let me give you the special announcement, you know, show your love. My birthday was May 8th. I had a wonderful time. I'm going to tell you about that, too, and we're doing a video that we shot, all right, with um, Scarlet and Ja Rule and Funkmaster Flex, all right? Special announcement, man. This is what my cash app looked like. It must have that green checkered box to the right of my name. No picture of me, none of that. This is exactly what my cash app looked like. Once you put in unique, make a haul, and you get ready to send it, it must have that green checkered box. Let's get this thing going. All right? Yeah. That little green check next to the house, it got to be next to it. You don't see that little green box. That ain't me. You know? You know, that's just a uh, verified uh, cash app holder. But anyway, that's where we at. Let me go because I'm a little serious, too serious right now. I know y'all like me hype, but that's how I'm feeling today, man. You know, just so you understand. You know, I. Uh, cheers, 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 cheers,
fresh out the can of 26. He be back on the strip, get it back in the mix. What he meant to give, you stand up 10 toes down, and I suggest you pay attention to this. Take a little gully posse and put it in the hall. He cut from the bottom, came up from the bottom. Drop the book, you, you gon' get it. But it's the grand page, and you, you too, you, you gon' visit it. Then you, you consider yourself linked in it. Took front row, row get juice from a king man. I went through it, so you ain't gotta go do it. Did not pay attention with what's stupid. Talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on. Probably the reason that him and your grand got along. A man that generated minutes on the block. Get it time. Never swill it to the cops, make the audio. man this is what my cash app look like it must have that green checkered box to the right of my name no picture of me none of that this is exactly what my cash app look like once you put in unique make a haul and you get ready to send it it must have that green checkered box let's get this thing going all right <laughs> 